Hi friends, my name is Borrodante and welcome back to Candy Hero. Okay, so here we are. Now, you guys wrote a whole bunch of comments and a couple of them are worth mentioning. I mean, all of them are worth mentioning, but we don't have the time. I think the eyes shouldn't be fully black and should have some kind of iris and whites of the eyes. Them just being black long ovals is kind of creepy. Well, I mean, yeah, sure, it would be kind of like an easy way out. But the thing is, we would really like change everything about this character then. I mean, initial concept looks like this. There is obviously like no iris or anything. And it's a very specific thing about this character. I really want to say that. I think it's way more important than the cutoff arm. <laughs> So yeah, I, I think uh, in the very last moment of the previous episode, we kind of saved the face a bit with the, the cheekbone area or whatever. So it kind of looks almost perfect at the moment. So a, a tiny bit extra effort on the face to make it more simplified and slick to fit the eyes. I think it would look really cool. So. I really don't want to add iris, because if we add iris to just this shape, it will be even more creepy. We'll have to kind of like change everything then. It will be just normal, cartoonish round eyes, I guess. Well, not round, like anime-ish kind of eyes. Don't want to do that. This is a thing with this character. I really like this. I can't stop imagining the poor guy trying to draw the sword with his left hand from the right side. Yeah, I totally forgot. 111 D. Bujitos actually said that in the previous episode, in the first episode of this one, we were doing the sketch, that the sword should be at this side, because that's how you draw the sword. <laughs> if it's the left arm. So we should do that, because it's really uncomfortable to do that. I guess that's not the way you do that. <laughs> I kind of know that, right? We were through this before. What else? Yeah, I thought of like, what if he's just carrying his shield in his right arm? Like he's actually a righty and he is holding his shield in the right arm because it's easier to carry the shield in the right arm when you are not actually holding your sword. That would kind of make sense. But at the same time, when I put myself in his position, I would really want my right arm to be free to do stuff like open doors and whatnot. So, yeah, I guess still he's a lefty. So we have to change the sword. Are you making the shield gem part slightly opaque or something? If so, it might be quite nice to have part of the scarf behind the shield to give some more visual emphasis to its opaqueness. Do you mean we should add some of the details of the warrior behind the shield to show the transparency effect with it? I guess we can do that, but there will be a lot of distortion in there, so even though the scarf isn't really behind the shield, it will still get into the distortion of the glass stone. So yeah, plus the green-blue background is gonna work out. It's gonna work pretty well in this case. I don't want to ruin the silhouette of the scarf. It kind of looks nice, reads well, and putting it behind the shield is kind of... I don't know, it makes everything a bit smooshed together, as far as I can tell. I feel like part of the shield shape-wise feels really strange to me. From our point of view, the top right part is the part behind the arm. I'm not sure if it's because of the gap between the body that makes the shape feel so strange or what, but it just feels strange. Yeah, I kinda took a closer look. I think we lack a little bit of extra stone detail here. Look at this angle comparing to the horizontal line here. So this one should really go more like this. That's where the problem was, I kinda messed up the geometry there. So, thanks on that one, we'll fix. Yeah, I think this is mostly it. Other comments are just about me saying juicy too much. It's an awesome word. It's way more normal in Russian though, but whatever. <laughs> to say that about colors, I mean. Oh, another one. I feel like his left shoe has bigger and near the knee than the right shoe and is bothering me. Well, we have to help you then. 
this thing, the end of the shoe near the knee. Well, yeah, this one seems to be smaller, but at the same time, what if it's just shaped like this? It's still gross, why would a shoe be shaped like that? A boot. But, you know, in this case it would work, because the closer shoe kind of facing us, and the other one is facing sideways. So, yeah. I like the way this shoe works in all kinds of ways, so let's make this one a bit wider. Am I good at art tips or something? This is the second time that I've given a good suggestion. Well, of course you are. You have eyes and brain, and you're not afraid to use them. Okay, let's actually start. Let's change some silhouettes first. Like this wider, I guess, would work. This is another reason why working in layers too much is a lot of uh, pain in the butt. Right now, this fix is gonna take a while. At first we fixed the silhouettes, now we bring back all the colors that we did, and now we find the colors of the shoe, but it's not gonna be all the colors of the shoe, it's gonna be only the red color of the shoe, and now we fix that by first removing the lock on the transparency, and doing this, and to be honest, the best way to start here would be to actually change the sketch to perfectly follow the correct geometry without testing our luck on that, but I'm too adventurous for that. Okay, here's the layer with the yellow thingy. And like this. Okay, now they feel a lot more even. Yeah, this looks better. Next thing is the shield. Let's fix the shield. Should have probably fixed all the silhouettes first and then go with the colors. Nope, feels very wrong right now. The angle shouldn't be there. It's actually... it actually looks correct right now. Maybe it should be shorter on top, I think. It should be like this. A little bit, not as much. And that angle should be lower here. There we go, I think this is where it goes. Oh, the shield messing me up. It's playing with me. Yeah, good. I think now it looks good. If the silhouette is good on a simple shape like that, then it's good. Just keep repeating that to yourself, loser. Okay, now the biggest problem, actually. This the sword thing. Let's remove it from here. Let's save the colors first, I guess. Boom. Boom. Now, let's draw the sword in, like, completely separate layer. Oh, you were pretty crooked and bent and whatnot, as I can see. <laughs> Probably like most of the things here. So what I'm doing, I'm just making a silhouette of whatever I have here, and I'll, then I just mirror it. I don't know what for, it doesn't look good. <laughs> I think it's better to do just this. What am I doing? It's like the simplest shape ever, let's just do it from scratch. And let's try to even not use any sketch and regret that. So, will the sword be over the shield or behind it? I guess behind would be okay. It should be a bit more vertical, because I don't want to break the composition. The sword was supposed to be on the other side when we were thinking through the whole shape of the character, so... Now it's really easy to mess up everything. Well, I think he looks fine for now when it's just a tiny black stick here. Okay, I guess it's good enough this way. Kind of feels really unsatisfying that we don't see the tip of the sword. At least for me. But there's no way to fix it here. Okay, the sword thing is done, I think. Let's add a little bit of sunlight on it. Was I? I think I was using the Kusanagi brush, right? That was already a thing. Hmm. So what kind of change did we do to figure out the nature of this particular sunlight? Brighter, less saturated if it's a cold color, and closer to warm, right? A little bit. Uh-huh, okay, let's do that. So brighter, now moving closer to warm and making it less saturated, because this is also a way to move closer to warm. Actually, metal is mostly not actually being lit anywhere, anyhow. 
it's just being reflective. It might be very blurry reflective, but it's still reflective mostly. That's the way I approach it anyway. But it doesn't really change much in this particular case. So I guess Sword receives a lot of sunlight from the back of the character, because why not? I guess some of the shadow will start hitting the sword in here. So let's imagine it being like this. Yep, and the rest is in the shadow. Cool, this is good enough for now for the sword, I think. Now let's work on the pants area, I guess. We left that for the future, as I always do. I, for some reason, always neglect the legs. So many layers. Okay, let's do this yellow fluffy thing. Do we need sketch? Yeah, sure, why not? It has some 3D hints. Okay, so brighter, more saturated. Wow, it's gonna really shine. <laughs> and, well, it's literally the sunlight color we have here. Maybe slightly closer to yellow, because that's what colors do when they get really bright. They distort closer to either yellow or cyan or magenta, depending on which one is the nearest one for them. The HDR effect, sort of. So it makes sense to distort the color closer to pure yellow. It looks gross. I don't know, it's kind of a bit too saturated. Okay, let's try this. Uh, let's save the color. Let's clean this, actually. I have no idea what these are about anymore. So this is the sword colors, and yeah. Now, this thing, let's paint it with 50% transparency. This. Now, let's determine where all the terminators are. And if you have sclerosis, terminator is the area where object turns from being lit to being completely not lit. So that's the important phenomena that's going on on an object when it's being lit. So we really don't think about the values at the moment, we just think, like, if a tiny person would be standing on the surface of this majestic fluffy thing, would the person be able to see the sun? So, if we can see the sun, that means we paint it bright. Right here, okay, we don't really think through the direct shadow, I guess. From the shield, I mean, there would be some shadow here. So I'm thinking this way. I don't remember if I mentioned it in the previous episode, if we would be drawing actual anime with sharp sh shadows and all, this would be literally the shadow for anime. They usually draw just terminators. Alright, let's smooth it out a bit, I guess, before adding the brightest spots. Oh yeah, so nice. When you smooth out, immediately you feel the geometry of this. And now for the brightest part. It's usually enough to just have these two gradations, like 50%, smoothed out a bit, and then adding 100% where it's like facing the most. I'm paying so much attention to values right now, it's like one thing that's like crucially important to figure out for really good three-dimensional rendering. Okay, now these pants feel a bit metallic. I made the gradient of brightness to smooth. We should flat it out a bit, increasing the roughness of the material. So kind of like almost evening out the brightnesses. There we go, kind of feels more clothing-like. It's still very smooth and all, of course, but I mean, that's cool. <laughs> Trust me, it, it's beautiful. Let's add some shadow areas. Oh, there we go. Immediately feels nice to see the shadow from the sword, like it actually reads. Kind of pleasant to the eye. So we'll do most of the basic lighting, including the darker shadows today. And then we'll finish with the grass and all the extra details of the light and materials. I wanna like, finalize the guy a bit, so that will be in the next episode. There's a good chance I'll do that actually today for me, so... You know, you're not allowed to say anything. Yes, you are. Say everything. But be gentle. Alright, where else is the yellow thingy? Let's do more yellow thingies. Some people said that maybe we should change the colors of some body parts, like some people said maybe we should use purple for the arms. Well, first of all, let's start with the fact that I'm too lazy to do that, but we can try to actually use some hue saturation transformations to make it work. 
we'll see where that will go. But I'm not sure if red gloves would look good with purple arms, it might look gross. And that would be literally the only purple object, but I guess that's not a big problem actually. Anyway, I don't know, let's uh, just keep going with the basic lighting, then we'll see. Maybe we'll see a bit more about the character and their design when he's gonna be lit. Alright, looks legit. So I have two parts of the scarf that are like overlapping each other, plus the shoulder thing all in one layer. Kinda messed up the whole idea about segregating everything to not be concerned about the silhouettes. But right now I guess we can use a little bit of lasso magic. There we go. Boom. Okay, now for the pants. Oh, they're in this layer as well. Mm, so nice to work with the slim sketch. So good. A little bit of fakey shadow from the corner of some shield thing, I guess. And smear it down a bit because whenever shadows go at a big angle, like falling down on the smooth surface like this, they become a lot more smooth. It's just that if you don't smooth that out, it stops looking like a shadow. It's like, what is this piece of clothing that is dark? Well, something like this. Okay, pants done. Now, the golden things on this ribbon. Oh, it's here, cool. Let's add some bright stuff. Nicely, nicely. Not forgetting this little bit. Oh, nice. Also, you. Okay, great. Now what's left is the shield handle thing. And then we'll be working on the deeper shadows and the gem shield. Okay, I assume this is the same color here. So the shield plate, the metallic part, shouldn't receive any direct sunlight, except for the caustic effect from the gem, but that we'll think through a bit later. Have we missed anything? Well, kind of teeth require some more work, I guess. And also this tiny something here. <laughs> Make me unsee meme. So where are the teeth after all? There we go. These. This is where you are. Now, I don't think it will catch any sunlight on it, but maybe let's give it a try just a little bit. Like this. So it would feel more bright. Like, there should be some reflected extra light from the lips right next to the teeth or something. So, it's kind of justifiable. Now, let's add a really dark color to the teeth. Also, there's actually kind of red ambiance going on inside of the teeth. So, we'll get a very different color. Or should we just use the air perspective, really? Yeah, meaning this color is what the darkest area is supposed to look like of anything. There we go. Seems good enough for now. I think it should reveal some more, like the bottom side of the top lip should be here. That's what looks a bit weird right now. Now let's go from the top layer to the bottom and add some dark shadows everywhere. So starting with the hat, the bandage and some golden stuff. Mostly we're gonna just mix in the air perspective color, that's how the shadows would go here. So adding some soft ambient occlusion. Okay, so I fixed some rough, really rough edges of the silhouette made by a super chunky bateau brush. It's not a good idea to create silhouettes with bateau brush. It's like super crazy messy, you, you'll just create this kind of nonsense everywhere. So it's a good idea to switch to Chiyoko when you're working on something more precise. For some reason I made two ears of this hat so different, this one's super thick, and this fold here was very different. What was I thinking? So getting through the objects, now at the layer number three, and this one is a big one. 
So let's start with the neck area of the scarf. For some reason, I wanted to darken it so bad. It shouldn't be darkened too much though. Wow, this starts to look so polished where the shadows are. Kind of cool look on the hat, on this part, on the neck. Kinda nice. And pretty easy to work with this approach of adding good ambience first, then adding brighter sunlight, and then working on some darker shadows as details. Really nice. Hmm. So let's work a bit more on the shadows, and then I'll be doing a bit of a break, because I'm kinda tired sitting for two hours straight. And that would be the end of the episode for now. So I'm really making all the surfaces, the ones that are not lit by the sunlight, darker where they're facing lower than the horizon level. Like, the more the surface is facing downwards, the darker it gets. But not to complete black, just a little bit. Just amount of ambient light from the sky gets a bit harder to the surfaces that are facing down. That's why it's a little bit darker. Kind of like this. It shows the volume really well. Very convenient light. Okay, I'm done for this episode. Ugh. Did some cool lighting on this hand. It looks kind of cool. Nice ambience from the shield and everything. So we did a pretty cool progress in this episode. I don't know why I'm turning off the layers. It's not gonna help anybody. I'm pretty sure the next episode is the last one. So, anticipate the grand finale. Tell me what you think on the progress in this episode. If you have any questions on the logic of lighting or something, feel free to ask and I shall answer. But for now, I thank you for watching if you did. I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Never throw away anything for the rest of your life. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Another left to hero. What do I do with that? <gasps> Genius solution. Nah, he's better off lefty.